Having just reviewed the rolling release OpenSUSE Tumbleweed Linux distribution, I thought I would continue on and go for an Arch-based rolling release Linux distribution. And I'm going with the KDE Desktop again, so I can make comparisons to KDE Neon, where you might get a bit fed up with me doing that, but... Well hey, they're all KDE, they all have a rolling release desktop. Though KDE Neon is a bit different, it doesn't have a rolling release base operating system, but anyway. So Antergos comes in a 64-bit only flavour, and you can choose either the Easy GUI installer or a lightweight installer, and you can choose from six different desktops. You have a choice of Cinnamon, Deepin, Gnome, KDE, Mate, Openbox, and XFCE. And you can choose that during the installer. And the installer is called, uh, Kinchi? Don't know. You would think living in Wales, I would be able to pronounce words with very few vowels in them, but, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> Just because I live here doesn't mean I can speak the language. And during install time, you get a very easy selection of packages that you would like or don't want installed, and that includes being able to select the Arch user repository. Very useful for expanding the number of applications available for the system. So just checking out the boot up time here, and as expected with an Arch-based distribution, it is very rapid. Although the KDE desktop, as always, is fairly slow to open up in comparison to other desktops available in Linux. It doesn't mean it's actually slow when running, it's just that slow initial logon. So before we get too far into it, we're going to check out the memory usage. 3-M shows we have 578 meg of RAM in use. So that is just a few meg below OpenSUSE. A little bit more than KDE Neon uses though. In terms of CPU utilization, well, it's currently doing absolutely bugger all, so that's uh, very good. Utilizing very little CPU just to render the desktop means you have plenty of CPU power to do whatever you want. Uname A confirms we have the latest Linux kernel, which is 4.14.3, which was released only a few days ago. And to add to that, we get Mesa 17.2.6 and the NVIDIA 387 drivers are currently available. So I notice one immediate giveaway that it is an Arch-based distribution, and that is by the amount of updates. And despite the fact I did the updates um, only a few hours ago, and it's going to mock me here and provide yet another kernel. So yeah, <laughs> great. We can have a new kernel and lots of other updates. I shall leave those for the moment because I want to do this review. So as expected, the version of KDE is the latest and I can get that in KD Neon and OpenSUSE. So, of actual day-to-day -day usage, there isn't really much between the operating systems, although I did come across one little oddity here that the application dashboard was not available. By default, it was the application launcher, so I did have to have a quick look on Google and immediately found it was missing a Plasma add-on application, or Plasma add-on package. Annoyingly, it was only a couple of megabytes large, so it's like, oh. You add quite a few extras to the KDE desktop when I chose that, um, but it didn't add the dashboard view, which is my favorite. So that was a little bit annoying, well, personally annoying for me. Uh, there's not really much point in taking a look for the applications. These were all things I chose during the install. So you can make it very minimal, which does rival what you can do with KDE Neon. The applications it has chosen with just the sort of minimal selections are perfectly reasonable, really. I chose LibreOffice. Yep, got the full suite. I chose to have a firewall configuration. And I also chose to enable SSH, which was very useful during the installer that it did enable the SSH rule. So just to confirm that, well, I mean, I was, I was told the rule was enabled. <laughs> Doesn't appear to be that case, though. So yes, um, sounded good what it was trying to do but doesn't seem to have actually done it. Well, looking at the IP tables list, it doesn't seem to indicate that SSH was enabled, so I'm either thinking that I've made a mistake or the installer actually failed to carry out the job. The install of new applications is carried out either via Pacman through the terminal or through the GUI or add remove software through the package manager. This is Pamac. It was easy enough to search for new applications. Yeah, just type the name. Take a look through the list and select what you want. So it's all very straightforward and what you would expect from a package manager. When I was trying to find the audio codecs for playing MP3s in Clementine, I 
Well, I did a quick look around and found I had to install components of GStreamer, but it wasn't particularly specific what I had to install. But anyway, I carried out the install and uh, yeah, it worked. So I'll have to do a bit more reading up which ones are good, the bad, and the base. I've kind of forgotten. I did know it, but yeah. I think that's what happens in old age. You tend to forget things, or maybe that's beer. Don't know. One of the two. Although during the install of GStreamer, it did get stuck. I didn't find any problems with missing KD applications. For example, I easily found Chronometer. Yeah, that's good. So I couldn't find any problems with it, really. Um, yeah, I'm quite surprised. This was an Arch-based Linux distribution that I got going out of the box, really without doing anything more than just choosing what I wanted during the install, and it all works. Huh, what is the catch? And I don't know, there isn't one. Everything has just worked. And that's exactly what I want as the end user. I don't want to have to start messing around with configuration files like you could do if you were to use Arch for building up from scratch. Yeah, you would have to work at setting the system up yourself, but using something like Antergos that you just pick it up and use it. Once you've installed the system, that's it. It all works. You might think, why not use Manjaro instead? That is also based on Arch. Yeah, that is very true. Although I find that Manjaro do install quite a few more applications. And this is very minimal, really. And I actually came across an interesting one here that I wasn't aware of, Sweeper. So I found that useful. That's something I missed out on using KDE Neon because that's so minimal that you, well, you don't get anything much at all. You get a browser, you get an image viewer, and you get VLC, yeah, that's it. You can choose to have a few more applications here in Antergos, but it's nothing too much, and you can still customize your system from here. And yeah, I installed Kadian Live as a bit of testing. Yeah, that's fine. But I don't feel there's anything much I want to go and remove from here. I would say that performance is slightly faster than OpenSUSE and Kadian Neon. I suppose, again, that's to be expected from March, that it is generally faster than the deb-based. Ubuntu-based Linux distributions, that's like a known fact. I'm absolutely not going to dispute that at all. Applications open immediately, the system has not lagged. And what does it look like now on system usage? Well, memory usage has crept up a little bit. Oh look, 634. I think the GNOME desktop still clocks in more than that at uh, a basic boot up. But I'm not doing this review to talk about different desktops, I merely picked a desktop I'm more familiar with and wanted to discuss more about what you get with the operating system. And that is it, that is it. I would certainly recommend looking at Antergos if you're looking for a rolling release Linux distribution. The only downside is you will get a lot of updates and you may have issues if you fall too far behind on them. If you want something a little bit further back from the bleeding edge, then you have the likes of OpenSUSE and KD Neon. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.